Hey everyone, this is going to be a tutorial on how to pot a SOTAC Purst 4. Uh, just a couple prefaces. Um, I have not taken this out to shoot it yet uh, after being potted. Uh, I have another one that I potted that I intend on taking out this weekend. So honestly, at this point, uh, it's not known if it even really does anything, how well these hold zero from factory. I've heard both good and bad, as with most clones, so um, take this video with a grain of salt, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it. The other big note is that really this is only good if you want either an IR laser or a green laser. The lasers are not color aligned, uh, at least on these two units that I have tested. So I got mine with the intention to only use it as an IR laser. Um, so that's okay with me for a hundred bucks. I figure, you know, if it holds zero decently, just having an IR laser is fine with me. So I'm going to go through and show you guys how to pot these. Uh, hoping to do it in one take, but usually that's never how it works. So maybe some cuts here and there. Some things you're going to need, obviously, are going to be the unit itself. Um, some sort of potting compound or epoxy. I use actual electronics potting compound because it's the right way to do it. Um, I had this laying around, so I figure I may as well use it. Uh, it's a great potting compound. It's pretty viscous, which helps it not uh, flow off the side of the circuit boards. Uh, and then some hot glue as well to kind of make some uh, barrier walls to keep the potting compound where you want it. So let's get started with the unit itself. Uh, it's pretty easy to take apart. It's just these two Allen screws here. And these ones I've already cracked loose a little bit. They're normally red Loctited. As you can hear it, uh, you're gonna want a really tight fitting Allen wrench uh, to get these off. So this one's a little looser. Uh, the first unit that I had, these were basically welded in. So um, obviously there's variances in their QC with how well stuff is in the actual unit. These ones came out relatively easily. Um, and then, so those are the only two things that hold the top plate in. The only other thing is they usually put a little dot of, you know, red Loctite or adhesive around the inner lip. So um, I didn't think it was gonna pull off, but I gotta try anyway. So there's a couple ways to do this now. Uh, the way that I did it was to take a really flat, a really small flathead screwdriver, uh, like an eyeglasses one, and basically kind of hammer it in underneath. Let's see if I can get it on here. There you go. So where the chamfer ends, the bezel, bevel rather, uh, that's where it meets the body of the unit. So if you can get a screwdriver in there, and I kind of just hammered it in, and it really only mars up the finish underneath the top plate that you're never gonna see anyway. Um, I've heard people take heat and they just pull on this lever. I didn't really want to do that. Um, so I think the way that I did it probably well, for me, was the better way. Um, your mileage may vary, obviously, but a couple ways to do it. Probably gonna have to do this in the vise, uh, so I will bring it back when it's done. But basically, just clamp the sides, pound this screwdriver in, and it'll start to lift the top up. And then once you're in, uh, we'll we'll go from there. And through the magic of video, as easy as that. Um, so this one was kind of a pain in the ass. A uh, lot of adhesive on this one. I, I do want to note the direction that I hit uh, the screwdriver in is I go toward the three and then I come in pretty much right here at this angle on this one um, and you'll see why in a second. It is also important to note that it really is, the split is just right where the bevel or chamfer stops. Um, so that's where you want to kind of put your your wedge and and get it in there. 
Um, this even was a little too big. Uh, if you have something smaller, it's probably gonna be better. Uh, but we're in now. And as you can see, I kind of kind of dicked the finish a little bit, unfortunately, but uh, that's fine. It's a gun, it's hundred bucks, whatever. So now that we're inside, this is gonna be what you're looking at. Um, so this is the reason that uh, I hit in the angle, which I do, because that's the thinnest wall, basically. So with this one, you can kind of knock that, and this is way worse than my other one, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Kind of knock that wall down, and that's where your screwdriver will be able to then pry the top off. Um, and same with this, so kind of the shortest path to the opening. Um, so the circuit board buttons, it's all connected to the top plate. The port here for the pressure switch, uh, it does have potting on it. The button on the back does not, so we're gonna take care of those as well. Um, but pretty much first things first is to get this connector off. We'll separate the top plate and the circuit board from the unit itself, uh, and we'll go from there. I usually just take my screwdriver and get a corner of it, pry it like that. You don't wanna pull on the wires too much. There you go, so now we're disconnected. So now we can take a little bit of a better look at this here with, without the board in the way. So this is gonna be your battery compartment, little opening, one tiny little wire with a, just a little dot of solder on there. We're definitely gonna to wanna to pot that. Uh, kind of the same thing with this back button. You're gonna to wanna to pot that. Luckily they have little bowls, if you will, where the potting compound will just sit in there. Um, we have to do them one at a time, obviously, because otherwise it will flow out of both of them. So we'll just set this like this, fill that, wait till it hardens, and then flip it and do the same thing on the other one. You can also do this little bottom bowl there, just as some redundant potting, because this is pretty much just silicone. Um, Things to note, you don't want to get any potting compound, Let's see if I can get some light in here, through this hole, because that's the uh, where the lasers lie and they need to be able to move to adjust. So we'll hit that with some hot glue and the bottom one as well. Um, this screw, or this spring rather, is the contact for the battery um, for the ground side. So that needs to be, or power side, whichever, um, that needs to be connected to the circuit board contacts this little part right here. So we're going to want to make sure that we don't cover that with cotton, uh, potting compound. Uh, this tiny little thing right here is the LED that indicates when the unit is on. So we don't want to get that. Uh, and then the switch is actually just a non-contact magnet switch, if you can kind of see. Boom, boom, and we'll get into that uh, once we take these three Allen head screws out. So let's do that. Okay, so this is the board. The only things that we need to worry about on here um, as far as potting are going to be just the contacts, uh, for the switches and then just a little dot on these, uh, magnetic switch components. So you don't want too much because that may interfere with the operation of it. Uh, but we do want them to be solid. There's really nothing on here on the top that is off limits for potting, um, we just want to keep it clean. Uh, so really it doesn't matter if you cover any of these uh, gold contacts here. They have no function uh, on the top side there. So it will work if you covered the whole thing in potting compound, but just for the sake of cleanliness, uh, we'll probably just do dot here, dot here, a little bit on each side of the switches. You also don't want to get any into the switches because uh, the switches themselves are not sealed. So if you build a big bubble around to kind of match the height of the switch, 
it may flow into the top and then make your switch inoperable. On the bottom, we're pretty much gonna wanna do everything. There's already a little bit of silicone here. If you wanted to, you could pull it off and replace it with potting compound. I just left it on my other one. So again, the only two things that we don't want to pot are going to be this here, which is the LED, and this surface here, which is the contact for the battery. Obviously, we don't want to get any in this switch, or this plug, rather, uh, either. So that's where we're going to build up a little wall of hot glue to make sure that that path into the switch stays sorry, into the plug stays clear. And we'll do a little bit of hot glue right here and just a little dab on here as well. And then we can pretty much fill the rest of this in. Um, we'll also do a dot on each of the holes so that it doesn't flow out the holes. But the backside of the plug connector, we're gonna wanna do, and then all of this circuitry uh, in here. So let's start on that. Okay, so I got the glue gun warmed up here. Uh, so we're just going to apply it to those spots that I had noted earlier. Um, I'm gonna do it kind of far away and then you'll, I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see what I've done. covered. Now we just need the LED, which is also very tedious. It's basically just got the front of that LED so that we can peel that off at the end and it will still shine through the housing. So we're going to make sure that all of our hot glue stayed where we want it to. Boom, 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 boom. Just gonna put a little bit uh, on these two, these three rather, bolt holes. And then we can start the actual potting. Oops, forgot to do this here. Make a little dam, if you will. It's more crucial on this side because the potting compound will go right through that hole into the connector. So we want to make sure, and I just ruined the other side because that's how hot glue works. So we want to make sure that we get either a line here and then a dot there, or if you're feeling bold, you can actually put the hot glue into the connector and then just make it so that you can pull it out. I'm gonna just try and get it on the part that I need it. So this is a metal contact right here, or clamp or something, but it's hard to see, but there is room for the potting compound to flow through there, so that's why we wanna get get that covered there. So now we're gonna be ready to start the actual potting. Okay, so we'll get the potting compound ready. Put the quick detach can on there. Mixing tube. Everyone loves to watch this happen, so. Okay, so we're in the tube there. The pot life is not super long on, on this particular epoxy. Um, so if you're careful, you should be okay. Otherwise you can tempt fade a little bit and try and let it cure in the tube before putting it on the actual unit. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so you can see. Okay, so that's probably gonna be as good as we're gonna get as far as focus. Um, but I just wanna show you how this kind of works and this is gonna be tough for me uh, to do it on camera, but 
basically we just want to start flowing this clotting compound over the circuitry. Um, it does flow on its own. You can kind of see it leveling out there. So it's really easy to put too much on, thinking that it'll hold its shape, uh, and then it doesn't. So I usually kind of work my way around the board a little bit so that it allows it time to flow so I'm not just dumping a bunch in one spot and then uh, it goes everywhere so you'll see it's especially important on these on the side here because the compound will hold a decent amount of surface tension on the, the edge of this board, but once that breaks, uh, it'll all just wanna run off. It'll kind of pull it with it, so gotta be really careful with those. Just put a little on. So once that sets up a little bit, I can then go back in and kind of fill in some of the edges of the board that don't have any chips on them, but that we want potting compound on just to kind of secure the whole thing. This realistically is probably uh, just fine. I don't think adding more potting compound is going to necessarily make it more of a bond um, because it is epoxy after all. So. If it's encapsulated, it's probably just fine. And I might be tempting fate a little bit here by wanting to make it look uniform when in reality it's probably just fine as it is. But do it for the gram. So here I'm not actually adding any more potting compound. I'm just using the nozzle to kind of pull some of it to the edge so it'll flatten out a little bit. I want to make sure it stays level. So we need to put something under that side there. Otherwise it'll all just want to run off. A piece of rolled up paper towel will do the trick. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. So that's gonna encapsulate everything that we needed to. This chip is uh, hard to see, but it's under silicone. So if we kept adding uh, potting compound to that, it would just eventually overflow off the sides and we do not want that. So this has a cure time of about a half an hour-ish uh, before it gets solid enough to kind of move around. And about an hour, I believe, for it to be fully hard. So I'm gonna move that off to the side and we can then move on to this. Uh, like I said, you have to start with one side, either this side or this side. I'm gonna start with this side, and I found that you can kind of use the box that came in to hold it up. Not sure if it'll allow for the best camera angle, but I'll put this way. So basically you just want it to be level-ish, um, and you only want to fill that area. You don't want to put too much in because, again, it will flow all over the unit. We don't want that, and it doesn't really add anything. So I'm just going to kind of, hard to see, I'll just show you at the end here. Okay. So just a little glob in there and then make sure that's level and we'll let that cure uh, with the circuit board. And then we'll come back and do the other side. 
just like that. Okay, so I gave the other side enough time to harden a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna work on this side now. Just squeezing a little bit of that somewhat cured potting compound out of the tube and get it to flow a little better. And we will get started here. So the components that we want potted are gonna be this sensor, magnetic switch, As you can see, this compound is still a little more cured than I would like in the tube. Too viscous. Squeeze a little more out. On a small dot on these here. Blacked in. We're gonna move to the switches. And like I said before, we just need a little bit on those solder joints. We're not gonna fill the whole thing up here. Probably do in between these two is one glob. Get some of those chips that were there. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do on this side and we're just gonna let that solidify uh, and then we will put this unit back in we're gonna check on this one so this one flowed a little bit into the back of the unit totally fine put a little bit more than I wanted to in there um, as long as it doesn't flow up this curve and into those holes you're gonna be just fine so now we're gonna work on that switch, the rear switch, and we're gonna do just the same exact thing as we did with the battery terminal connection. Okay, so now I'm just gonna try and get this as vertical as I can, and we'll let that cure as well. Okay, so it's been about two hours now. Uh, so we can look at our work here. Had a little bit of uh, some running. This didn't cure enough before I uh, started on the bottom. Um, the bottom flattened out a little bit more than I wanted it to there. Both of that, both of those issues are just fine. Um, everything's locked in. It's got some reinforcement, so these thin wires aren't gonna rattle loose under recoil. Uh, let's take a look at this here now. So this is all solidified and hard. Um, all the buttons still click, that's important. We can now start peeling this hot glue away from these areas that we don't want uh, hot glue on and just make sure that everything uh, that we need to get to, we are able to get to. Still pliable enough where I can just push it back down. If you really wanted to, you could probably redo it. I'm not too worried about that one uh, little part. So as you can see, this is still soft enough where I can make, I can take the sheen away with my thumbprint. Um, but that, again, that will solidify uh, over time. So come over in here, and get this out. So peeled a little bit of that away. Totally fine. There's nothing there anyway. That was part of the area that I just filled in just for looks.
Okay, so that came out. You can even see the paths for the pins in here. There's gonna be just a little bit of black in there just from me supporting it with the dirty screwdriver, but that's gonna be just fine. You can kind of see how it wicked uh, capillary action kind of got sucked through the bottom of the connector even though there's really no access to it so something to watch out for get the LED that you can see just fine and then the battery contact is the last one we want to make sure that there's no glue on this obviously we want the full contact area so I'm just kind of rubbing that over gently to make sure that it's clear it's not yet, but obviously don't want to scratch this. So this one came off a little bit, came uncovered. It's surrounded by potting compound though, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, so yeah, we can go ahead and put this back together. One thing we are gonna need to make sure of is that these uh, buttons still go on and, and click just fine because obviously now there's more stuff in the way. I didn't have any issues with it when I put mine on, but um, looks like we may have to trim the outside of that a little bit. You can see where it's contacting. And a little bit, it's going to contact. Um, Obviously there's more here than we need though. So it kind of flowed a little more than we wanted it to there. You just kind of want to peel that away before it gets too hard. It's almost like a taffy consistency right now. So it's pretty easy to work with. That's gonna be just fine when we assemble it. It's kind of one of those things where you risk damaging it if you try and make it perfect. Um, I know it's gonna be frustrating for some people to hear, but if it clicks, that's all you want. If it fits in the housing, that's all you want. Um, all the buttons click. You're not gonna be messing with these too much probably. Uh, so we're gonna put the screws I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on the screws, put the screws back in, and then we'll move on to the uh, housing final assembly, some options that you have there as well. Okay, here we are at the final assembly. Uh, there's not much to it. You do have a couple options. What I would do is I would recommend testing it uh, before you fully seal it up, um, because that way you make sure that this connector does need to go in quite far. The first time I did it, I fully sealed it up and then, you know, was wondering why it wasn't working. Uh, so as you can see, it goes all the way up pretty much uh, in there. So first time I did this, I actually put a layer of hot glue in between these two layers. Uh, I think that's unnecessary. The rubber of the buttons is going to, you know, dampen any blow. Um, it already is potted, so we probably don't need redundant potting of hot glue in there. Plus it was a huge pain in the ass to do it and get it to um, screw in without being all warped. So I wouldn't recommend that. You could if you wanted to. And I probably will just put, you know, now that I have this connector in, um, I'm probably just gonna put a big gloop of hot glue kind of right underneath where the wires are all bundled. That way when I put it on, they just get sealed in that hot glue. Not that I think the wires are going to, I don't know, somehow internally short or break or something, um, but it's just, you know, a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, and then we just make sure that this spring goes back into this little hole right here. Uh, so I'm gonna get the hot glue gun going and we will then seal it up. Okay, so here we are. Uh, hot glue gun's all heated up. So like I said, I'm just going to Kind of changed what I said a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna put some on these wires here. Really pump it in there for no good reason. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to also uh, basically just kind of in here, just 
gloop a bunch out and then we're gonna close it. Um, so again, make sure you have that spring in there because it's gonna be not great to open uh, once you put the hot glue there. Forgot I was gonna do a little bit on these too. There we go. So you could use silicone here and just fill this whole bottom part up. Again, I don't know really what that affords you, what benefits. Um, I'm not even really sure that hot gluing does anything, but like I said, for my peace of mind, uh, I do it and uh, it's easy enough. So you wanna make sure that it's hot. Otherwise, if you wait for too long for it to cool, you're not gonna be able to get this cover on and then you have to painstakingly pick out all the hot glue and do it again. Um, I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on these screws in a bit, but for now, just going to, again, kind of take advantage of the heat that's in that hot glue, make sure this cover uh, is seated all the way while it's still warm, so. Put these back in, tighten them down, make sure it's flush. Probably should have started with this one since that's where the bulk of the hot glue was. Tighten down those too much. Switch still works, obviously, because we didn't do anything with that. Uh, if you do want to tighten this up, make it a little harder to, to change. I don't have any issues with it. The detents seem to work pretty well, but if you wanted to make it tighter just for you know whatever reason, uh, when you have this cover off, it's just an Allen screw underneath, so you can just tighten that up like a quarter turn and it 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 makes it pretty pretty snug. So so yeah, there you go. That's uh, pretty much how to pot a SOTAC Purse 4. Uh, not too complicated. It is a bit tedious, but um, you know, it, it should prevent, hopefully prevent any anything on the circuit board coming loose, any of those wires breaking off, um, and hopefully gives you, you know, some decent years of life uh, for either an IR or a green visible. Um, they're not, like I said, they're not color lined at 25 yards. They were off about a foot and a half. Um, so I just zeroed it using the IR laser because that's why I got it. So there you go, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If you want me to do this for you, I may offer that as a service. Um, but as far as it goes, that's pretty much all there is to it.